I'm Chef Christine Cushing, and I'm teaching horrible cooks how to be fearless in the kitchen. Today, a wonderful young mother who's abysmal in the kitchen. She goes from wrecking rice and peas... There's nothing more that I can do. ...to a blind taste test in total darkness. Oh, my goodness. Will she learn to master flavors? Oh, it's horrible, and Or will her family continue to suffer? This is going to be a shocker. Wow. Um... She's a mom, a girlfriend, and an HR professional. But her food is so flavorless, she puts the blah in bland. Meet Anne. When I first met her, she told me, you know, one of the things she doesn't do is cook. The worst thing my mom has ever made me was homemade pizza. It tastes weird. I ended up throwing up later on in the evening. There's a part of me that's really scared to eat some of the food my mom makes sometimes. I am a limited. She doesn't know all the flavors. She doesn't know all the spices. She just doesn't know. She used soy sauce all the time. I know nothing about seasoning, but I'd love to be able to understand why garlic needs to be used. Like, I don't get it. It'd be really good for her to learn how to season. It brings the food to life. I think what I'm hoping to get out of this experience is to understand flavorings outside of soy sauce and salt. I would be beyond excited to have Christine show my mom how to cook. My objective is to teach Anne how to make exciting meals for her son, her boyfriend, and her family. If I pull it off, her food will go from flavorless to fantastic. So, Christine, this is where the magic is supposed to happen. Okay, so what happens here in this lovely stove? I try to make things work. I tend to burn anything that goes yes. in the oven. And is there something in particular you've always wanted to learn to cook? My son is a finicky eater, so okay. Tishon is finicky. So if there was something that I could make that he would eat, then that would be, that would be fantastic. If I were to say, Tishon, finish this sentence. Your mom's food is blank. What, what do you think he would say? Bland. She's not very excited about my cooking. What I'd love to work on with you is definitely flavor. Okay. In order for me to sort of get you there right. is I need to see you cook on your own. Okay. All right, are you eating it? Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, I have to taste it. And guess what? You have to taste it, too. <laughs> okay. okay. I'll try my best All right. to make it edible. What I'd like for you to make for me is a classical rice and peas. Rice and peas is a traditional Caribbean dish that's made with rice, beans, and coconut. But I want you to make it for me authentically. Watching Anne as she tries to cook a dish that she's seen her family make hundreds of times is going to give me a sense of how I can help her in the kitchen. There's a ton of stuff here. You can use what you feel. Okay. It's rice, <laughs> so I need water. I'm intimidated because clearly I don't know what I'm doing. Anne has absolutely no idea how to make rice. I mean, none. Did you put onion in boiling water? I don't think you would put that in the rice. Is this oil or what does it smell like? Like a fruit juice. I don't know what, though. <laughs> I feel overwhelmed. Literally, I have no clue. We can put soy on the onions, that's for sure. Is there any? Oh, no, don't put the soy sauce in it. There's no soy sauce in rice and peas. Oh, I don't think it's soy. I don't know. Can Anne actually smell? She can't smell soy sauce. I gotta work on that. I think I'm burning the onions. I feel overwhelmed, actually, with all the items. Honestly, I'm done. <laughs> I don't, there's, there's nothing more that I can do. It's not looking so hot at this point. <laughs> just doesn't smell right. You don't smell anything? No. I'm sure that any West Indian watching this would be just embarrassed for me, <laughs> but... Doesn't make me want to eat it. Let's put it that way. So who's going to go first? You promised. Uh, you I try it. I don't think it's cooked. How is it? Crunchy. Oh, it's horrible, and. It's crunchy. If it wasn't crunchy, I would eat this, though. If it wasn't crunchy, you would eat that. Yeah. I've got way more work than I thought. When you taste my version of a traditional rice and peas, you'll see that flavor is king and that you can actually make something that's healthy, right? nutritious, tastes amazing, and you can do it. 
Okay. Are you up for that? I am. Okay. I am. We're going to start by toasting some spices, and that'll bring out their flavor. Two things that have to go in, allspice and thyme. Now smell that. Oh, wow. It smells good, doesn't it? We're going to just do a mild chili. So anytime you're chopping, you want to have your fingers tucked in, and I just kind of roll my knife. Okay, I call that the locomotion. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm left-handed. Let me oh. do it this way. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. Yep. Tip. There it is. Now you want to put it in here for me. We're going to add a little bit of ginger. A nice little handful. I'm just going to add the rice to that, and then we're going to toast it. Okay. We're still sort of at a medium heat. I like that. So we're going to add about a teaspoon okay. of, of salt, because rice is very, very bland. So we want to get you away from bland, and we want it to have, you know, maximum flavor. Right. Now we add two cups of chicken stock, two cloves of garlic. Then we're going to add our red kidney beans. Everything's in the pot. We'll just cover it and make sure we leave it alone, simmering for 12 minutes. This is some untoasted coconut. This you would buy at a health food store but it looks like it's a fresh coconut that's just been grated. I'm toasting it because it's gonna give us, you know, a lot more flavor, and the color's gonna get nice. It's gonna be nice and golden brown. So, 350. Okay. It's in the middle of the oven. That's gonna be our garnish. Okay. Smell that toasted coconut. Oh, it smells fantastic, yeah. Oh, something about coconut. It's the coconut and the allspice. I'm in the Caribbean. Yeah. Like, it's just <laughs> crazy. Dying to taste our rice. Woo! Oh, wow. Mm. It smells really good. So here's what I would do. And then something I think to kind of jazz it up color-wise. These are just little veggie kebabs. You could do them on a grill. You can also do them in your indoor grill. So I want you to taste this now, Anne. This is good. The rice just has a great flavor to it. What I was smelling when you had the spices in the mm -hmm. oil, that's what I'm tasting. The coconut is really, really good. Let me taste some. <laughs> There's a lot of versatility here. I feel like I'm eating something healthy, right, right? but it's so delicious. Okay, so now that we've explored a couple of these beautiful flavors and really how to use them, I want to push you a little bit more. I'm going to take you to the dark side. Okay. We're going to the dark side. Coming up, Anne's palate is plunged into darkness. And later, she cooks gourmet pizza for hundreds. I'm scared. Anne's idea of flavor is soy sauce and salt. What would make it better? But she really wants to make a meal that her son and boyfriend can be proud of. She doesn't know where to start or exactly how to start. And now, to help Anne get a little more experience with flavors and spices, I'm taking her on a blind taste tutorial to one of the most unique restaurants I've ever been to. But you're dying to know what the dark side is. I am. <laughs> I brought you here to Au Noir because I really want to work on enhancing your sense of smell and taste. Okay. Okay? We are at Au Noir, a restaurant that serves food completely in the dark. This place is critical for Anne because she has really a challenge tasting and understanding flavors. I thought she can't see. We're in the dark. Her sense of smell and taste will be heightened. I think that dining in the dark is a wild idea. I've never done anything like this before. We're going to have the same thing to taste. Okay. And I want you to taste it and smell, do everything. Use your senses that are available to you. I've planned out a variety of items for Anne. My goal is to help her start to recognize different tastes and develop her understanding of layering and combining flavors. First up, we start with tomato, and then we'll layer on some more flavors. There's a little bit of a tartness to it, as well as some sweetness at the end. What is it? Tomato. Very good. Let's give this one a smell. We're building from the previous, so you have a, a, a cherry tomato, salt, and one other thing. I don't... You don't smell anything? Fresh basil leaves. Oh! I've never had a basil leaf before. It was interesting. Oh. Now we're going to try some very different flavors. First garlic, then pine nuts, and parmesan. I think I smell tomato. I don't... I don't know. Taste it. I have no idea what it is. All that is a baguette? scraped with garlic. Never known really what garlic tastes like. What do you think? A seed? Of sort of like a... That's a pine nut. Oh, this is Parmesan. Yes, it is. Yeah. You're good. I'd give you a high five, but I have no <laughs> yes, idea yeah. where your hands are. And now something a little trickier, a recipe that combines the garlic, pine nuts, Parmesan, and basil. Pesto. 
Is there garlic on this? There is garlic on it. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm getting better. And the last thing, you're gonna get a little bit of peppery again, that cinnamon flavor. So that's the basil? Yep. So this is a pesto. Oh! Without the other senses, I can hone in a little bit more on what I'm tasting. And the idea with this, exactly what I thought would happen has happened. You've really kind of used the senses. Mm -hmm. So I think it's time to go back into the light. Okay. <laughs> into the kitchen. Okay. And do a little more cooking together and, you know, take you to the next level. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. I can't wait. To, to jump into something else. How cool was that to be in the dark? Was that the most was, bizarre thing ever? It was. So we're gonna make a simple pesto grilled shrimp. All right, so let's start on our pesto. All right, give me a little smash of that garlic. There it is, and we're gonna put in two cloves. I'm gonna give you a little bit of coarse salt that's gonna help to actually grind that down. Okay. I'm gonna add the basil in here. Okay, so keep going. Look at that. Now that your son is sort of a teenager, you guys can start experiencing these things together. And, and making pesto the old world way is kind of something that people would do together. It's sort of very communal. You're in the kitchen. You and your boyfriend, you can show him up, say, listen, <laughs> exactly. step aside. Exactly. <laughs> Could be a little Italian nonna. <laughs> you think? I think so. And a little bit of the Parmesan cheese. So give me one last little turn. And then we get to taste. Wow. So you tell me what you think. Has some kick to it. Is that is that a good way to describe it? It definitely has some kick. Oh, now it's good. Holy mackerel, that's good. <laughs> All right, so shrimp. We're gonna do some grilling. Why don't you give those a little stir? Beautiful. Pan is hot. Ooh. Oh. Right now, I'm drooling, I'm salivating. Can't wait to taste these. Mm. Coming up, Anne gets her first taste of cooking in an industrial kitchen. And later, will her son have to suffer through more flavorless food? Wow. Anne's food is so awful, her son is terrified to eat it. There's a part of me that's really scared to eat some of the food my mom makes. But she's starting to learn about great flavor from a fantastic Caribbean rice and peas. This is good. To developing her sensitivity to taste sensations in the dark. I'm getting better. And now we're making a mouthwatering pesto grilled shrimp. How confident will you say you are now? I'm a little worried sometimes about burning stuff because okay. that's something. And I'm looking at the shrimp thinking I need to flip them over or do something. OK, on that note, let's look at that. You see that guy there? See okay. how it's totally curled? Flip it over. Your shrimp starts like that. Once it curls in like that, and they start to get a bit of pink on them, time to turn them. Oh my uh, goodness. Unbelievable how great that smells. So let's dress the plate with some zucchini ribbons and toss on our beautiful shrimp. Now we're gonna put in a little bit of fresh basil. We're gonna finish this baby with just a little dollop of the pesto. I think first you should go in for a shrimp. Okay. Let's like eat your fingers. I think this one has my name on it. I totally think so. I can taste smokiness from yeah. the grill. I can mm -hmm. taste just the flavors of the pesto and, mm -hmm. oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Oh, it comes together nicely. Oh my goodness. So now I think we're gonna go from the grill and I'm gonna throw you into the fire a bit. Okay. It's a good thing that Anne loved that pesto because she's gonna be using tons of it. I'm putting her to the test. Up next, she's making a giant appetizer at a splashy party for hundreds of people. Look at the snazziness. This is very nice. Pretty soon, this room is going to fill up. It's going to be a rocking party, and you are going to be making hors d'oeuvres for the people that are going to be here. I'm going to cry. <laughs> no, no, don't cry. My stomach is like somewhere in my support hose down. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled around my ankle. I'm scared. Hey, Marco. Christine. Good to see you. Nice to see you. This is Anne, and Hi, this Anne. is Marco, who's the chef. Uh, 9 o'clock, 300 guests are coming in. 9.15, 9.20, we have to serve them. We really got to be on time tonight. All right. All right, Anne, so you are going to be making a torta rustica. A torta rustica is like a giant pizza. Because there's a great kind of a circusy theme upstairs, we're going to do it into a big checkerboard. It's got to look wow, right? Okay. Okay, you got to make two big ones. Okay. So there's your pesto station over there. Holy mackerel, we got to get moving. It was garlic. How do I? That should be good. You gotta do the tasting of that. 
Because remember, what's it about? It's about flavor. It's about flavor. More garlic? Let's do that. So one more clove. Do another little taste. It's better, yeah. Definitely better. Yeah. So what we need to do now, these are gonna be rectangles. Okay. You got whichever rolling pin you like. So, and one hour till liftoff. How's that going? It's coming. So let me see what's happening. Right here, it's paper thin. And right here, you see how thick it is? Right. We don't want that. Okay. Just roll it out some more until it's even. It's also getting really hot in here, so this is sticking. Come on. Now I'm fretting. This is not cooperating. How's it going, guys? Everything good? I'm trying to get it even, but it's not cooperating right now. Okay, I think I fixed it. And you keep rolling nice and thin, okay? Okay, the dough is finally ready and in the pans. But we still have a lot to do, and we only have 45 minutes left to do it. The doors are open. Guests are arriving. We gotta move it. You're gonna pesto your torta rustica. You're not moving fast enough. I feel really stupid. It's uh, 9 o'clock. These aren't even in the oven. We doesn't look like we're going to make it. OK, give us 5, 10, I don't know, 5 minutes they should be in the oven. We got to go in. So much pressure. OK, you know, let's put them both in this oven. OK. OK, get ready. So keep your eye on those. What's going on? Ah. This side here is a disaster. We open the oven to discover our torta rustica look like the Swiss Alps. It's a mess. My only hope is to get in there, poke some holes in it, and see if we can get the steam out from under the dough. Okay, this side here is a disaster. Like, that is a disaster. Now we gotta put it back in and hope that we caught it in time. Don't worry, Ann. No more bubbles. It's gonna look great. Yeah, please bring up the appetizers. It's 9.30. Okay, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Okay, gotta go. Okay. That. Come on. Oh, that looks nice. Okay, follow me this way. <laughs> Would you care for some torta rustica? This is awesome. Oh, man. Ellen, this is beautiful. Thank you. Come on, oh my. They're enjoying it, and, and that's satisfying. I would do it again 10 times over to have that type of reaction. Good. You like that? Look at our trays empty. The trays are empty. Looks what do you like, think of Anne's torta rustica adventure? It was difficult. There yes. were some challenges, but yeah. you know what? People like it. I, I think know. It's well worth the hard work. Okay, so are you ready to do a little more cooking at home by yourself? You know what? Yes. <laughs> Anne's cooking has gone from flavorless to flavorful, but now she needs to use everything she's learned if she's going to pull off a great meal for her son, her boyfriend, and her family. Anne? Yes. This is where you bring it home. Right. Do you want to know what your next challenge is going to be? Please do tell. You're going to be cooking a jambalaya from scratch for your family. OK, go. OK. To know that I'm going to be cooking for my family and friends, though I'm confident, I'm a little nervous. Those are going. These are diced. Okay, let me look at this. Oh, wow. Add rice. Do you add rice and toast? What? I'm so confused right now. sticking. I want to wow them. I was confident, but now I am feeling anxious. My son is picky and Neil is picky. Are, Are you here? excited? Yes. Or worried? Oh, uh, uh, more worried. This is going to be a shocker. <laughs> no. That, that's the rice. See, your shrimp, you got to get that off. You got to oh also God. slice your sausage. Did you turn off the rice when the timer went on? No. Ah! Oh, crap. Oh. It's probably overcooked. I'm hoping it's not going to be mushy. More. 
Cussing kiss. Yes. Cussing kiss. Yes. So this really is the moment of truth. I don't know how many years, but I'm gonna tell you right now, this is the first thing you've ever made for me. I know. It's good. It's very good. It is good. I think it was damn good. Okay. <laughs> you like that? It has nice that's, flavor. That's something. This is beautiful. You like this? A sausage, amazing. Yeah. Rice, amazing. Okay. Seasoning, I can taste many flavors. In my right now. <laughs> I'm so very impressed. I'm glad. Please, a round of applause because honestly, when I first met Anne, she couldn't even identify garlic when I put it right under her nose. Now she can make her own pesto in a mortar and pestle. She has made a homemade jambalaya from scratch for her entire family. She is fearless in the kitchen. I've grown leaps and bounds in, in this time that I've been with Christine. Leaps and bounds. Visit myviva.ca slash fearless in the kitchen.